Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel Physics Surgery and here we are in Physics Surgery Originals and I have brought forward to you a nice interesting problem on avoiding integration whenever magnetic movement of a charged body which is being rotated purely about a particular axis is given. Okay, so uh, you might have heard about zero magnetic ratio but in this particular video we are going to highlight not just how to use it but not how to misuse it okay so let's try to understand the formal wording of the question so here we go a non-conducting uniform rod ab of mass m and charge q uniformly spread over its length is rotated uniformly in a conical pendulum motion forming a constant angle theta equal to 30 degrees with its axis of rotation the magnetic movement of the rod is mu the angular momentum of the rod about a has an magnitude of L okay so find the mag value of QL divided by M mu in SI units okay so we want to give it a try pause the video try it out for three to four minutes and then come back for the concept and also the solution that I'm going to explain as a part of this problem okay so here we go with the concepts that are required to ace the problem so the first concept that you need to understand is the concept of gyro magnetic ratio which eases out your calculations not just in this chapter but also in the modern physics when we apply it for Bohr's model later on so the magnetic movement mu which is calculated for any rotating charge as it constitutes a current right so you should understand whenever any current carrying loop is there the magnetic movement of it is defined as current into the area enclosed by the loop okay so here you'd see that there is no formal current but a charge which is rotating in a circular motion can constitute an average current so imagine there is a body which is shown on the right of your screen and there is let's say an axis of rotation for it and each and every dq of that particular body which is a charge goes in a circular motion around that particular axis okay so if i assume that it contributes towards a current of di then we can write the net contribution of magnetic movement as integration of di into a and what's the value of each di each di should be dq into omega divided by 2 pi multiplied by area which should be easily seen in the diagram as pi r square okay right then because omega is a constant thing for all the parts of a rigid body it can come out and also you could see a cancellation of a pi which yields half into integration of dq into r square Okay, so we'll stop it here and then we move on to the angular momentum, which is a familiar calculation for us about the axis of rotation. So, which I'm writing as L axis. That should be simply integration of each dm into r square, where r is the distance measured from the axis multiplied by omega, right? So, there should be a multiplication with omega here, right? Then what you do, you take a gyromagnetic ratio definition, which is the ratio of magnetic movement divided by angular momentum measured about same axis. So, when you divide these two, right here also there will be an omega then omega gets cancelled and you end up getting a nice kind of ratio of integrals here and a half obviously you could see outside waiting so this particular thing generally you cannot write any special uh, ratio but in some situations where you are mentioned that the charge and mass are being similarly distributed around that particular body the integrations mathematically will cancel out and give you net charge by net mass so because there is a half you get this famous ratio which is mu by l axis should be equal to q by 2m which is a very important result and if you remember this result in the exam you can avoid the integration whenever you are knowing angular momentum you can directly calculate the magnetic moment okay so this is concept number one but when you go to the concept number two you should know the difference between angular momentum about an axis and angular momentum about a point from basics of rotational mechanics you should know that angular momentum about axis let's call it as l axis is a component of l okay right so the l of a rod for this one each dm element here the value of this l is r cross momentum right and when you draw the cross product the angular momentum vector will be shown perpendicular to the rod okay so what i am claiming is that this l component is this l axis okay right so the value of l axis is i axis into omega that's your formula whenever you use l equal to i omega you should realize that what l you are writing there is the l about an axis because moment of inertia actually is defined about an axis so you should also realize that omega which is per parallel to the axis is not in the direction of l 
So whenever someone asks you, is always angular momentum parallel to an omega, he's talking about an L, about a point, and omega about an axis. They need not be parallel to each other. It would become parallel if the body is symmetric about the axis, which here, obviously, it is not. Okay. So the L bar is not parallel to omega. And in the question, he's talking about not the L axis, but this red colored L that I am showing in the diagram. Okay. Right. So that is the careful part you need to be worried about. So you could see with this angle 30 degrees that is given, and I said this should be component of this here L sine 30 should be L axis. That's what I've written it down and I'll borrow both the concepts of angular momentum and gyromagnetic ratio into the next page and apply it to the given problem. Okay. So I have borrowed both of them as I promised here, right? And the picture from your thumbnail, which represents the problem. Okay. So since mu divided by L axis is Q divided by 2M for this particular problem where you could see the charge is uniformly distributed and also mass is uniformly distributed and hence you can use Q by 2M ratio. Okay, but only problem is the capital L is not the capital L axis, but he has mentioned capital L about a point. So I'll make the correction. So instead of L axis, I'll substitute L sine 30 here. So Q into L divided by mu M if you rearrange end up getting four and not two because of the correction factor there. Okay, so you could see uh, if I had known all the concepts before the problem is just two steps. I had to explain all the concepts. That's why it took you so long to reach the answer. Okay, so and in case you like this video, please make sure you surf through rest of the videos in the other playlists that I have marked in the list links of the description below. And you could see Pathfinder Solution Series, Olympiad Workout Series, AITS Select Series, and Resolve Series, more than 100 videos which cater to a progress in your subject. And you just keep playing them in a loop so that you understand uh, the nitty gritties of subject. Most of these actually cater to the doubts that are not generally answered very clearly in the textbook. Okay, so, uh, and in case you have liked the video, please do make sure you like it and share it amongst your friends in Telegram and WhatsApp groups so that the channel actually grows. Whenever you like the video, the YouTube algorithm pushes the video to more greater audience and it would be helpful for my channel to grow. Okay, thank you. See you in the next video.